Stay connected to your community and save. Just 99 cents a month gets you three months of unlimited access to inform.com. Visit inform.com slash subscribe and get your first three months of news for only 99 cents a month. Did you once own an item of clothing that made you feel like a million bucks? Where did it go? And why the heck did you get rid of it? Hi, this is Tracy Briggs, and welcome to Back Then. While many of us look back at our school years with nostalgia, like Kevin Arnold in the Wonder Years, sometimes we still feel the sting of insecurity, raging hormones, and unrequited crushes. But if you grew up in the 1970s, at least you had a little something called hash jeans. They were a denim weapon of choice that kind of took the sting out of adolescence one star-embroidered bell-bottom pair at a time. Hash jeans were among the best-selling jeans in America, starting in the mid-1970s. They often bested denim giants like Levi's and Lee's. They were flared, and they came in different colors, styles, and fabrics. Now, with podcasts, I get really sad that you can't see what I'm talking about, but certainly all you need to do is Google hash jeans, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. I had a pair of hash overalls in the mid-70s, I'd say somewhere between 75 and 77. I was a student then at Agassiz Junior High in Fargo, North Dakota, and the overalls were so cool. They were a navy corduroy that had a zipper up the front and, of course, the iconic star on the back pocket. I, of course, got rid of them years ago, but I found a photo at a, at a site called Hellhound Vintage that has a very similar pair in denim material. So I, I um, advise you to go there or go to my story at inform.com and that picture is there. Many thanks to Hellhound Vintage for letting me use their photos. I still remember how much I loved those hash overalls and walking down the old hallways of Agassiz Junior High in my overalls comb in my back pocket, and the smell of Wella Balsam shampoo drifting off my Farrah wannabe hair. In those overalls, I felt almost cool. I knew my older sister and her friends at Fargo South High were wearing those jeans, so they must be cool, right? I figured they made me look much older than my 13 years. After all, I paired the two long overalls with platform shoes or clogs, so I probably skyrocketed up to maybe 5'1", mm, 5'2". Five, five, but being about 85 pounds, let's be honest, I probably still looked about 10 years old. I'm sure by the time I went to high school, I'd gotten rid of the overalls. Most likely, they didn't fit, and of course, the styles had changed. As the years rolled along... I bought designer jeans. Remember Gloria Vanderbilt and Calvin Klein. Then I went to boot cut, skinny straight, acid washed, low rise, high rise, distressed, and holy. But nothing made me feel like those hash jeans did. I wish now I hadn't been so quick to toss them out. While I probably never would have worn the overalls again, maybe my daughters could have used them for those 70s dress up days at school or maybe even for that friend's disco themed birthday party. And yes, if you're asking, one of their obviously super cool friends actually chose a 70s birthday party theme. That kid is obviously going places. However, even if my daughters never wore them, what's so wrong with me just keeping them because they make me happy? I can just imagine pulling them out of the old trunk in my bedroom, the feel of the corduroy on my fingers, a tactile reminder of simpler years, watching Welcome Back Cotter, eating Pop Rocks, and letting mom and dad make all the decisions. Like many things, we don't appreciate the joy of our favorite old clothes until it's too late. What we ditched 25 years ago for being out of date or too small, discovered today would spark joy and the warmth of nostalgia. I asked some friends on Facebook if they had any items of clothing that they wished they had never thrown away. I found many people did. As much as we've Marie Kondoed our lives and tried to embrace minimalism in the 2020s, some of us think it might be nice to have a piece of the past stuffed in the back of our closets. So with their permission, I'm sharing their comments from long lost leisure suits to the found joy of seeing your kids recycle your favorites. And I do encourage you to go to inform.com where you can see this story, because while I will read their words and their comments here, you really have to see some of these pictures. They are classic. 
This first one is a tapestry dress. Um, picture a super floral dress that kind of looks like a couch. Picture that, and she's got long straight hair. Um, tapestry is really defined as a heavy cloth that has designs or pictures woven into it, and it's used for wall hangings, curtains, and clothing. Starting in the mid-1960s, as hippie culture was growing, so were the sales of these floral print dresses. Whether it was the love of nature or wanting to blend into grandma's couch, tapestry dresses were all the rage. This is what Debbie Mitchell wrote about her tapestry dress. In the early 70s in California, my tapestry dress matched the orange carpet and probably someone's bedspread. Now, you probably know what this next item of clothing looks like, don't we? We all know the leisure suit. As synonymous as they are with the 1970s, it's surprising to learn that leisure suits, defined as a casual suit consisting of a shirt-like jacket with matching pants, originated in the 1930s as vacation wear for wealthy men. But leisure suits were at the height of their popularity in the mid-1970s. Now, the leisure suit is the very definition of 70s kitsch. Ross Collins wrote this about his leisure suit. Seriously, they were comfortable. They never wrinkled since they probably had no actual natural fibers. He included a photo of himself in his leisure suit with his saxophone in 1975. Great photo. I remember this next one really well. In the 1980s, Forenza sweaters were all the rage. Now, Forenza sweaters were knit with um, sort of a real heavy gauge cotton yarn. Many of them, but not all of them, had a deep V-neck on one side and sort of an ordinary scoop neck on the other. So they were reversible front to back, and oftentimes you would wear them with a t-shirt underneath. This is what Erin Gillette said of her Forenza sweater. I wish I'd saved my Aqua Forenza crew neck sweater from 1986. A lot of girls had the V-neck and wore it backwards, but mine was a crew neck. I'm pretty sure I wore it with floral denim pants. An awesome look, Erin. So what were people wearing with their Forenza sweaters? Well, very likely, Guess Jeans, a hugely popular and trendy brand in the 1980s. By 1984, sales at Guess had reached $150 million, with the price of one pair of Guess Jeans climbing as high as $85 a pair. In 1985's Back to the Future, Marty McFly, of course played by Michael J. Fox, wore Guess's denim clothing, which was reportedly designed specifically for that film. In the informed story, um, I actually have a photo of myself with my very good friend Missy. I'm wearing my favorite pair of Guess jeans that I had probably in um, probably 85 or 86, and I think, oh, I'm several pounds um, skinnier, but we, we won't talk about that. Somebody else that talked about her guest jeans was Jean Sando. She said, I owned a pair of light blue paisley guest jeans in 1985. They went with a blue chambray button-up shirt and a mustard yellow crew neck sweater with a narrow dark green knit tie. I miss the 80s. That sounds like a great outfit. Kathleen Keene talked about the 90s blouse that she would still wear. She said, I love this peach blouse my mom got me. It was around 1990. The gold buttons flopped around, so mom got a neighbor to cut the backs off, then drill two holes for sewing the back on flush to the blouse. I really miss that blouse, she said. I would totally still wear it. Now, some of us uh, were smart enough to hang on to some of their favorite pieces of clothing. Heather Lundberg, for one, held on to a flower girl dress. It's absolutely precious. It's red and white, really frilly, really lacy. And she included a picture of herself wearing the dress and also a picture of her young daughter wearing the dress today. Here's what she said. That was my flower girl dress from my parents' wedding in June of 89. I was almost four then. I absolutely loved that dress and wore it whenever I could. My niece actually had it for a while when she was younger, but I made sure I got it back in case I had a daughter one day. My daughter, Cora, is three in this photo. And again, super cute photo. Check it out on inform.com. Somebody else who saved their clothing for their daughter to wear, Anne Leonhart. And this is really cute. It's a, it's a senior picture of a, of a young woman. And here's, here's what the mom, Anne, wrote. Here you go, my daughter's senior pics. She's wearing a Fleet Farm t-shirt I bought and wore in the 90s and a men's flannel I bought at Target back then, too. She wears them all the time. 
I want to say thank you to everybody who commented on the Facebook post about their favorite long lost fashion. I'm so sorry I couldn't include all of your stories. There was such a fun, um, fun group of all of them. I just didn't have the space in the column. Not to mention it's really hard to find photos of some of these clothing brands that aren't copyrighted and I don't want to be sued necessarily. But some of the other clothing that got mentioned from people uh, were buttonfly jeans, Benetton sweatshirts, clogs, gauchos. I remember gauchos. I had a pair of Kelly Green corduroy gauchos in junior high. Apparently I was really into corduroy. Go-go boots, hip huggers, pedal pushers, scooter skirts, which I had never heard called that before. Scooter skirts are also known as skorts, so they're kind of a combination between a skirt and shorts. Smocks, stirrup pants, and zubas. So if you are one of those people who is longing for that piece of clothing that you lost or you gave away years ago, it's okay. It's okay to mourn it because, you know what? We have vintage stores out there. So, hey, Hellhound Vintage, how about you give me a call when you get more of those hash overalls in stock? And that is back then. Thanks for joining me. Hope you join me next time. Get reliable and accurate local news with Inform.com. Inform.com is your trusted local news source with journalists dedicated to keeping you informed about what's happening in your community. Visit Inform.com now. Inform.com.